and welcome back to another episode of Tiger Eye. We've got a great episode for you this week. A new sports season is beginning. Tomorrow we have a home basketball game against High Brighton and Wednesday we have a home try match versus Bandies and Inca. With this new season, our athletic booster is hosting our second year of the 50-50 raffle. Hey Tiger Nation, I'm Jody Elkins. I'm the vice president of the athletic boosters here at Fred T. Ford. I want to tell you about some exciting things coming up. Hopefully you've heard about our 50-50 raffle. We did it last year, but we're doing it again. And this raffle not only helps the athletics, it helps every organization here at Ford. What we need you to do is to find the QR codes around the school, go onto the website, get signed up, and then you can start selling those tickets. The power of this is how much we sell, the more it generates. And remember, 50% of what you sell will go back to the organization that you sign up for, whether that's band, basketball, baseball, whatever that is, we support all organizations here at Fred T. Ford. We're excited for you to be involved, and we're going to have weekly drawings for everybody who sells tickets. Who likes free money? Who wants gift cards? I do, so I hope you do too. So definitely check it out and try to get signed up and raise as much money as you can to support the organizations here at Fred T. Ford. Thanks, Mr. Elkins. This week, I'm showing some boys soccer highlights from our game against North Lincoln. Charlie was at our home Raider meet to give us a view of our team this year. And Max is looking at commonly used news sources and gives us some insight into their bias. But first, let's dive deeper into sports this week. Going into their second game against North Lincoln this season, our boys varsity team already has one win against them with a final score of one to zero. Hoping to have another win to go further with their season, senior players defender Andrew McIntyre and goalkeeper Dylan Steinhoff keep an upbeat mindset with their thoughts before the game starts. Last game we had an intense match and we won 1-0. I think it'll be about the same, but I think we're going to put more goals in that this time. I think we're going to we're going to get a really good win out of it. I'm really positive going into it. Combating North Lincoln caused our team to stay higher up on the field to prevent the chance of a goal being scored. Senior defender Matthew Whalen was able to help keep the ball where it needed to be on the field, helping the team secure an early goal in the first half. <laughs> Oh crap, I better not miss this ball. <laughs> it's basically what's gone through my head the entire time. With a previous win against North Lincoln, our players had to match the level of skill and effort that was given before. Defender Alexis Navagoza has been playing for around 12 years, a majority of his life, but feels his skill level for his senior season has allowed him to gain an edge to the game that he didn't have prior, giving him better luck this game as well as this soccer season. I think mostly on my speed and technical work. Uh, I guess it was something that I was lacking uh, during the past years, but I feel like that's something I've gained advantage of. Playing for old high school, Dylan Steinhoff has found positioning to be his struggle as a goalkeeper. I tend to find myself a little uh, closer to my near post or further away to my far post. I need to like, kind of master that and get where I need to be. It's not over. All right, we, we need to make it a convincing win. We need to make we need to pile on some goals here. Going into the second half with one goal, our defensive game was well kept with no goals being scored until the last eight minutes of the game when Caden Racine got his second goal of the night. Coach Scott Goforth as well as player Alexis Navagoza feels the team had a good connection that led them to their second win with one more goal under the belt than last time against the North Lincoln Knights. Uh, started out really well. Uh, we came out really enthusiastic, uh, you know, really uh, with a strong drive. Uh, we got an early goal, which was really good. I think it went pretty well for us. We got the win. Uh, we connected really well as a team. And um, there was just a lot of passion on the field. Our boys' soccer season just ended, but if you want to be more involved as a fan, then maybe you should join Copus Crazies. Hey, Tiger Nation. Are you a member of Copus Crazies? If not, it's not too late. We need everyone to come out and get involved and show that school spirit. It's a great season coming upon us with wrestling, indoor track, swimming, and my favorite basketball. Let's get that gym rocking. Thanks, Mr. Elkins. Besides our fall sports season, our Raider team also had their home meet recently, and Charlie was there to give some insight into this year's team. On November 2nd, the JRTC Ford Raider team competed against a other teams and placed fifth. I spoke with Owen Conley, Yang Kong, and Logan Brewster about the importance of leadership in JRTC Raider team. Really just about like understanding everybody, like everybody has strengths and weaknesses and not everybody's going to be as good as anybody else. Understanding what, how everybody does and just trying to like work, work everybody together. You're paired up with people that you're also like the same level as, but then you're also kind of mentoring the new guys as well. So 
develops leadership. By the other leaders, they told me what to do, so I kind of pick up from them. And Jared C teaches me like a lot of leadership. Logan Brewster, who had his first meet this year, and senior Owen Conley, the battalion commander who has been doing this throughout all of high school, have both made memorable experiences through the Raider team. We went to nationals, or Raider nationals in Kentucky. It was uh, we went to Fort Knox in Kentucky. It was it was really fun. We got to be on base. We got to sleep in barracks, and there was probably over 300 teams there from all over the country. Probably the first. Raider meet we did this year, which was at North Iredale, just because it was my first time doing it, so I got to get a better feel for the experience. Going to practices and competitions together builds connections and teaches skills other than leadership. Definitely teamwork cooperation. During like a uh, obstacle course, we gotta, like co uh, cooperate to finish that. End. I just wanted to improve my physical fitness and learn what it meant to be part of a team. I do command a lot of people, which is also kind of fun, but it really helps them too. It was interesting to see all of the different competitions that went into the JRTC Raider Meet. Thank you to all the staff, volunteers, and students that made it possible. More. When I say PT, you say more. Thanks, Charlie. It's great to see our Raider team perform. With soccer and Raiders ending and a new sports season beginning, tons have been happening at Ford, but also within our state and country. With election season passing, many at home were glued to their TV or phone to check the news. Max this week is seeing what people's choice of news is and how that can affect the viewers. Just 13 days ago, the United States held its general election, and in this election season, it felt like people trusted the media less than ever. And according to data from polls done by Gallup News, that may be true. An all-time low, only 31% of Americans reported that they had a great deal or fair amount of confidence in the media to report the news fully, accurately, and fairly. In 2003, that number was 54%. We wanted to know more about how people in Catawba County see the media. So on election night, reporters from Tiger Eye News went to both the Republican and Democratic watch parties to speak to people about where they get their news from and how they feel about the media. I spoke to Pat Harrigan just hours before it was announced that he would be our new representative in the House of Representatives, and he said this about the media. I think we've got a systematic manipulation of our mass media, and that is one of the greatest problems and threats that we have to our republic in this country. Country. Catawba County School Board member Jeff Taylor and Democratic candidate for commissioner Gino Baker feel that the media has some bias. Even the most credible news has a certain amount of bias to it. There's going to be a slant one way or the other, uh, some more so than others. It's scripted to some degree. They, they've taken out the freedom, in my opinion, to give their honest opinion because they are drawing a paycheck from someone else. People who distrust the media aren't without reason. Back in April of 2023, Fox settled to pay Dominion, a voting machines company, nearly $800 million after Dominion accused Fox of intentionally lying to their audience about the 2020 election and Dominion's voting machines impact on it. I spoke to Rick Donkel who said he had stopped watching Fox News, but he had a different reason for going away from it. Since 2020, I stopped watching Fox News because they started calling a lot of the elections around on 8 o'clock and didn't follow them through, so I've switched over to Newsmax. An attendant at the Republican watch party, Jimmy Young, said that he felt that young people often get better information than older people. I think the young people have a better chance of getting it right than anybody else because they don't watch mainstream media. Mainstream media is the most unreliable source that you can get, in my opinion. Um, you guys, internet all over the place, you're on TikTok, you're on X. Max Charles, a St. Stephen's High School student, offered a different perspective on how young people approach news. Personally, I think it's better to listen to local, local news, because I don't think people realize that what really affects your life is on the local level. I think that, especially amongst our generation, younger people, I think you're seeing less less and less support for this kind of polarization bias news. And people, people just want a return to how it used to be like in the 50s and 60s where you know you had, you had one news station, you heard the news from one person, and you were able to trust it. I hate it when I hear kids my age that they get their news from TikTok, um, just because you can't verify that stuff. Ford student Jamarcus Collins seemed to agree about getting your information from social media. I don't 
do social media. If it's not the news, I don't. I just do straight news, no social media. Making sure that the information you get is accurate and unbiased is very important. The way I recommend doing that is by going to MediaBiasFactChecker.com to learn more about your news source and its biases. Back to you, Heather. Well, that's all for this week. Thanks for watching this episode, and we'll see you the next.